it's been quite a difficult um, situation to manage to try and record during the lockdown and with the pandemic because I am uber safety conscious. So, you know, I make sure I do my best that everyone can be as safe as possible. So it has been all awkward to try and organise. At the moment we were safe and legal to be able to edit. I was back in the editing studio with Neil at the studio. Um, it's, it's, it's just for me, the biggest thing is about keeping everyone safe. So that means, yeah, that we, we had to put the delay in for the, the second half of series two because it wasn't quite finished yet because we, you know, we were hit by three or four months of not being able to get anything edited and sorted. Um, but I think it's worth waiting for when you do get there, I think, for some really good stories in the second half as well. Um, so it's just been taking taking the time to take our precautions, look carefully, what can we do safely, what do we have to put on the back burner? It was at the start of the lockdown period that uh, Mark got in contact and said that he'd like to do uh, an adventure. It was going to be a prose piece with the cast reading uh, the script basically directly to camera. So that was a nice, easy one to, to film. A Moment to Lose, um, in that one, we were essentially reading the script, uh, sort of semi to the camera. And that, that was a, a very different experience. You kind of still worry about how you are framed, what's behind you. Um, obviously, it's, it's sort of a little bit alien because you're, you're not, you've got no one essentially to bounce off you are talking and saying your piece but with no response from the other characters so it's all a bit strange you just kind of um you just fill in the gaps yourself sort of mentally i suppose so that was that was a really fun experience and really lovely to actually keep up with the the, the audio dramas during lockdown but the moment to lose i thought was a really interesting idea for a story and a really like there's a great element of mystery there with like a potentially new face kind of thing at the end of it Doing a prose reading something a little bit um, easier to kind of direct yourself because I'm, I'm an English student at university as well and I think like being able to go through a text and analyse it, I can do that kind of thing. It was a nice idea to do um, the, 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 the sort of the story, the, the, the Abraham Lincoln one was nice and easy to do because we just you know, recorded it on our devices, well my daughter's device because my device is terribly primitive. Going now is it? Okay lovely, thank you. If you go out make sure you shut the door. <clears throat> Hope this works. The next idea was to do a short video bringing back the operator from one of the previous audios and making it look as if it was a video call because of course especially during lockdown the big thing was everybody was working from home and everybody was doing video calls so we wanted to make it look like it was on something like Teams or Zoom. So I sat down with Mark and we had a long call to try and work out how to devise this. And I came up with a lot of ideas and dropped in some suggestions to him. And then it was a case of getting everybody to film their bits separately and then trying to edit them to make it look as if it was an actual consistent call with everybody interrupting each other. So it involved a lot of fast editing. No one's getting a word. Duracell Bonnick. Well, excuse me if people like to hear my voice. Correction, Mr. Pencil. You'd just like to hear the sound of your own voice. Now give others a chance, please. That is enough. Oh, you're in trouble now. Sorry, you mind? And I think the end result actually looks really, really good. I never thought I'd be filming Doctor Who in my downstairs toilet. Uh, which was interesting, but uh, the lighting was quite good because I got my lamp from the bedroom and put it on the on the system and it sort of lit it quite nicely. So it was odd. It was odd not doing anything off someone, if you'll pardon the expression. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think it worked out. And it was nice to see everyone, even in a, in a disjointed way. So it was, it was nice to keep going, but it was it was peculiar. But I'm glad we did it. When it came to um, the second one, interfaces, um, having to. Um, 
direct myself acting, uh, I just couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> it must have been so frustrating for um, Adrian and to get it all together. <laughs> oh, you're in trouble now. <laughs> it's so hard. Oh, you're in trouble now. <laughs> I mean, for so much of that, I was just wetting myself, <laughs> at myself, <laughs> but um, it was good fun. I, I thought it was a really funny script and a really, really nice idea. Interfaces was my absolute fave. I loved that. I loved the story. I loved the concept. Um, recording it was, was fine. You know, you just um, you try and find a, a quiet time and a quiet place that's well lit. Again, you have to worry about the framing and everything, but I, I really loved that and the finished article of that was super exciting and I really, really thought it was an excellent idea of Mark's. I just thought that was genius. Such a good way of, of creating something during lockdown. Brilliant. Uh-huh. Well, all I can say is, Tu crois que tu m'impressionnes avec ton costume à rayures et tes cheveux défaits? Moi, je préfère mes docteurs. Petit. Barbu et humble. Did it in one. And of course, in interfaces, I have to do a little bit of uh, French. And I obviously wanted to do it in a one hour, and I did. I nailed it. Job done. Like a pro.